we had nice sohbet, nice muhabbat with him. We visited the tomb of our grand Sheikh Sheikh Sharafuddin Dagestani. <coughs> and our last night in Istanbul, we got the news that the visit wasn't going to happen. We had made intentions that invited us. There was this keeper of the uh, <coughs> Mukaddas Emanat, the holy relics. And it has in his, he has in his possession over 30,000 relics. And uh, through uh, the, our brother that was in Istanbul, through him and through the Shehzadeh also who came to visit us, we were invited, they're saying, if you are going to Istanbul, to come and visit. So we made the intention. But at the last minute, they say, we cannot make it. I said, I said it's okay, nasib. So let's continue on our way. We're in two, three separate vehicles, big vehicles. And we just crossed over from the Asian to the European side, from European to the Asian side. We crossed. Once we crossed over, we were within minutes of reaching to the Derga. Crossing over um, rush hour in Istanbul is not like rush hour Sydney center. Eh? And to cross the bridge, literally we cross continents. You understand? From Europe to Asia. Then we got the call, they say that the person is just turned around. He was on his way. I believe he already reached there. He turned around because he heard that we were coming. Two days ago, we were from, two days? It was two nights ago, before this. We were in Yalova. He was going to Yalova. And he turned around. So I said, turn around. Our bus drivers at this point, they were ready to kill us and kill each other because you don't know what I made them to go through in these eight days. We pay them well anyway. We made them to travel from uh, Aksham Satin, Hazrat Dari to Hayratin Tokadi. Where is that in Tokat? No? Yeah? Bolu. Ah. And we were going. I made them to travel till we reached Konya, Tehajut time. I don't know when was the last time they stayed up till Tehajut time, but they did. Visiting the Saint of Allah on the Day of Judgment, we will have to be witness to them that they also went to 44 tombs, like this or like that. Even if they hated us, they were ready to kill us. Okay, every rest stop, oh, <laughs> they were so upset with us. So I said, turn the buses around. They thought I was crazy. I was leading it. We separated a little bit anyway. And my bus driver was better than the rest. He said, if it is very important, he says, then turn. Then we will do so. I said, it is very important. He said, as you say, he turned around, the other two buses, they had to follow us. Hmm. So it's like rush hour from taking the bridge. What bridge is that? George Washington? Hmm. You know, if there was a traffic all the way from Passaic to George Washington, all the way till you reach, say, 96th Street. Hmm. And then reaching 96th Street, we're about to get off. They say, turn around again, go back to Passaic. You understand? Big coaches. We went. I arrived first. A man greeted us. There were some tests for me. Our brothers didn't warn me anything. I just walked in. Alhamdulillah, I passed the test. I'll never forget and never forgive you. So I passed. Alhamdulillah. Then we went into the room. I brought seven people with us. There were seven exactly into the room. And inside was filled with thousands of the relics of the Holy Prophet and Sahabi Kiram and the saints. Footprints to the sweat of the Prophet to the date bark that he lay down on. 
And the man was very nice. He was a complete stranger to us, but he was a friend of a friend. And we went inside, and he was explaining everything to us nicely. Before you know it, he took the, the bark of the Prophet wasalam, where he was sleeping on, then he made us to kiss it. He showed us one uh, container. He says, contained in this is the sweat of the Holy Prophet wasalam, that is mixed with perfume, of course. For 1400 years he's been preserved. And he led us to smell it. He said a couple of things too, I'm not going to say because uh, you guys don't know how to carry it properly. Because it's still going on. Sakali Sharif is about to come out, women with their children, gidi gidi gidi, coming down, not knowing what's happening. Huh? And you blame me for screaming at them all the time? This is manners, you understand? It is way better than once upon a time. Sakali Sharif was here in that small masjid over there. And then our brothers and our sisters that they are so proud of being Muslim. I've been Muslim for 60 years. So Akhali Shari was happening, Shaf, and he was there giving it. And the man decided, while the visitation was going on, the man decided to take his shoes from here and to walk with his shoes, carrying it inside the masjid, in front of Akhali Shari, to go to the other side, because his mother wants his shoes, or something like that. You remember, right? Who was there? Were you there? Huh? Oh, you were there too? You remember, right? Right. So, at least this is progress, looking at it like that. But we have to be very careful. This is when we're going to come to her question. What is law and what is adab? So, before you know it, he took out one container like this. It was a glass dome. And there was uh, wax coming out, and there was a hair, a few strands of hair of the Prophet ﷺ. It was growing. As you know, the hair, they can't, it doesn't cast a shadow. There's no shadow. Because the Prophet ﷺ is made from pure nur. And when the sun hits, the shadow uh, doesn't form. So he took it out, and there was a hair, and the hair keeps on growing. Huh? Before I know it, he opened it. When he opened it, I just closed my eyes. He took that hair and he pressed it to my lips. And then he pressed it to my eyes, I took off my glasses, he pressed it. And then he went to Erdam, he went to Mustafa, Serkan was there, Mahmoud was there, Bilal was there, hmm? the old crew. Well, Charkas was there. Good thing they didn't listen to Bilal. He decided to give order so many times during that time, huh, Bilal? Yeah. After that, um, when everyone came, he was saying to Ali was there, Hassan was there. Yeah. Was Masood there or no? Masood was there. Yeah, he was saying, uh, Ali, say bis Osmanis. Say bis Osmanis. Say, huh? Yeah, a, at least today. I squeeze him a little bit. He decided to do things without me saying to him because it came to my heart. I say, I must tell Bilal, I have to say by tongue because your hearts are not working. I said, tell Bilal to take the flag. And when I'm over there with the woman, he's supposed to wave the flag. He did without me saying to him, Alhamdulillah, I'm happy with that. That can last me months. So he kissed it to our eyes, to our lips. By that time, everybody started crying. He started crying too. Later, he told us, he said, he has thousands of visitors coming. He says, he cried only like four times, and this is one of them. So after that, we were all finished. We were somewhere else already. And then we went inside his office, we sat down, we started talking. I listened, he started to give sohbet a little bit. And I took my muhur sharif I had one like this, and 
I decided to give to him. Immediately he got up and he kissed my hand and he hugged me and he says, Sheriff Andy, he called me Sheriff Andy. He said, let everyone to be witness to this. He says, this is an open miracle because I was saying in my heart, I don't have one of these and I wanted to. And Sheriff Andy just immediately got up and gave it to me. I'm not going to tell you how I knew, but I knew. And then later, Kuchuk uh, Mehmet was there too. Of course, then later, our guys came. They were downstairs. While we're giving sohba, tum tum tum, they knock on the door. We refuse to open because it's in an apartment building. It's a secret location in Istanbul. Then Kuchuk Mehmet said a couple of things. I, I must know when to interfere, when not to interfere. So I didn't interfere. Kuchuk uh, Mehmet saying, there are people, they are downstairs, over 40 guys, they are waiting. And then the other uh, uh, man is saying, the caretaker, he's saying, young guy, he's like maybe late 30s, he's like, Shehzadim, <laughs> they are coming to see the Prophet and you're stopping them? He says, how can it be? He says, call them up. Okay, very good. So I didn't interfere. So all our guys came up. And if you think I'm being uh, unnecessary in making people to line up and to kiss and do all of this for seven years, if there's any doubt that what I'm doing is wrong for seven years, get it out from your head, get it out from your mind and from your heart. Because that day we showed that we are disciplined also. Because it's not easy to fit in 40, 50 people in a small room like this, you know, everyone just going around and he picked I think it was five pieces. One, two, three. I think three pieces. Huh? Four pieces of relics. And they came and they kissed. <laughs> of course, some of you are sleeping and you didn't even know what you were doing. And they come in, they look and they kiss and they look at this one and they, they pass. But that was the bark of the Prophet. Some of them, they just look and then they pass because, of course, by this time they were going by two hours of sleep every night. Yeah, okay. And they were traveling from Asia to Europe and Europe to Asia. So maybe I can say, but it shouldn't be. Most of them, they pass. At uh, that time, by right, I shouldn't even say anything. But I have to say something. I have to say like this, like this to people, just like over here. Uh, some of them, they wanted to touch. And Erdam got so upset also. as one says, don't touch it. <laughs> they didn't touch it. Then the next one definitely didn't even touch. And then we did the visitation, they went out, and then we started talking. We gave a nice song, but I say thank you very much. And then before they came, he said, It came to my heart now. I have to give you something, he says, from one of the holy relics here. But I didn't ask, I didn't want. Because for me, my shake is enough. And I didn't think he was serious anyway. Obviously, I don't know Turkish people too well. But I just, I, I said something also that touched him a little bit. So I said, anything can happen. So he says, don't worry. He says, later on on your, on your way out, he says, we're going to prepare something for you. And so we left. And the next day as we were leaving, I got word that he really is going to prepare something. And one of our guys who was leaving later than that, they made plans. And then Erdam went and picked it up. And that was the day when I made all of you to sit and to wait. You're wondering why I had sobat for two, three hours. Huh? I was waiting for the Prophet to come. We came, he was somewhere else, we came, we made short ziyarat, it was all wrapped up, and we put it over there. Anyway, Alhamdulillah, may Allah accept what we are doing.